All right, so welcome to the channel, more specifically the Getting Familiar series, where we're gonna break down all the main components of residential construction in the most basic yet informative way possible. Now we're gonna begin with topic one excavation because aside from it being one of the initial activities in new construction, it's arguably the focal of a structurally sound home going forward. So excavation essentially sits the footings of the home below the heaving effects of frost. Okay, so you have the ground moving owing to freeze thaw cycles, but your footing stays safe from cracks and other alterations because its underside is located below this activity zone. If you're in a cold area like Toronto or the surrounding general region, Ontario, code typically requires a minimum depth of four feet below exposed surface to be removed from this frost hazard. Now, I'm going to talk more about footings in the utility in the next topic foundations, but for now, it's important to understand that the underside or bottom of the footing is what informs the depth of the excavation. So surveyors will come pin a benchmark elevation. You'll see a little orange flag typically displaying something along the lines of where this abbreviation denotes the point of reference, this the elevation in reference to what? Sea level. Now, does this number really matter? Not necessarily, it's a datum, which is a standard scale that surveyors use to coordinate a property in its orientation. But where it does come into play is indicating how low other cuts of the foundation have to be in respect of it. So for purposes of example, if your finished first floor is denoted at 172.02 meters and say the ground is four feet below that at 170.8 meters and your underside of the footing is at 168.67 meters, you know that your underside of the footing has to be 3.35 meters or roughly 11 feet below your finished first floor and that you'll be digging roughly a seven foot deep pit. Now, once you're at the underside of the footing, it's really pivotal you remain level within an inch range, at least around the perimeter of the home where the footings will rest. The main idea is how are going to settle a bit over time, even on virgin native soil, so you want to give it a level plane with similar compaction to do so. Anything along the lines of large boulders or substantial overdigs need to be corrected by either taking away or in the latter case adding stone since most construction materials don't cope well under undesignated stress. So for instance, on a brick veneer wall, you might get what is called a step crack forming right up through the outside of the clay bricks if one side of the footing is resting on a stone and the other on soil. In regards to the process, a skilled excavator operating a steady flow of triaxles can carry out this task in a day or so, obviously depending on the size of the basement. The amount of fill that needs to be removed will be measured in cubic yards, so you can actually get a rough gauge of this by doing a volume calculation. So quite simply, if you have a length of 45 feet and a width of 35 feet, and the overall pit is seven feet deep, and you do the calculation, so 35 feet multiplied by 45, multiplied by seven, you end up with roughly 11,025 cubic feet. Now divide this by 27 to get the cubic yards, which is 408.5. So the average triaxle holds approximately 14.5 cubic yards of fill. Anything more than that can of course send it over the scales regulated by MTO and obviously affect its breaking, which we don't want to do. So 408.5 divided by 14.5 equals 28.16, so roughly around 29 trucks. Now on each home, there will also be an overdig on each side of the house, typically around two feet to 30 inches to allow for formwork for the concrete, which will then be infilled or backfilled when the foundation wall has had time to set and cure. It's typically in the range of seven to 10 days. So this isn't necessarily fill that needs to be hauled away. But it's important to remember if there was a previous basement, that is a demolition, which there typically is, especially in areas like Toronto where there's not too much vacant land sitting around, that this number will be significantly decreased because the bulk has already been removed. Um, irrespective when looking at price, it's not uncommon for the excavation of a sizable modern home to run within the 10,000 to 12,000 range plus HST. 
Obviously, uh, good or bad base conditions and other variables like shoring can of course make or alter this number, but it's best to never skimp out on this task because it will definitely set the tone for the rest of the project. All right, so that's excavation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped. And stay tuned for other informative content. Like I said, we're gonna do foundations next, followed by framing, before proceeding on to more mechanical items in homes.